Food is good, I'm not gonna lie, the food is really good. We just, uh, D Dustin just cooked up some squid, which he caught yesterday? Mm, last he night. He caught last night some Can't fresh. Any fresher than that. Yeah, yeah, it was seriously fresh squid. Squid, really good. If you wanna see that video of the squid being caught and everything, head on over to Dustin's YouTube channel, Bushcraft Tools, I'll put a link here. It's, um, yeah, we're, it's coming along now, this Viking shelter. We've just made a little outdoor fire pit here for cooking. The main project this episode has been the, the long pit, the Viking long pit, which you could probably just about see over the back there. <clears throat> just to put it into context. So what we're doing with this Viking shelter is, I appreciate from, from other videos, we, I, I think we've put up two episodes so far. And uh, I probably need to explain a little bit more in this episode about what's actually going on because there's a lot of new people on board, which is great. So I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I'll just give you a bit of context. So this is this is a we're in a private woodland, Dustin's woodland. The wood's already been pre-cut. Um, it's all cedar wood. It's cedar trees. So to answer some of the questions, why didn't we strip the bark off the bottom of the the logs? The the reason is because those logs aren't actually taking any weight at all. So cedar is very rot resistant as a tree. They will take a while, a very long time to rot away. It's the, it's the actual frame itself, the A-frame, that's what's taking uh, the weight of the shelter. We haven't done the roof yet. I think I said in the previous episode that I was going to do the roof. Or we were going to do the roof, sorry. We're not going to do that now because we figured if we put the roof on, it's going to make it really restrictive inside to do things like the fire pits and the beds and everything like that. So we figured maybe actually with the roof as it is now with, you know, with the... the the frame there but not the roofing material then we can actually do a lot more work and move around a bit more and dig and stuff and just get things built in the shelter and then put the roof on i know it's just probably a strange way of doing things but it's, a, it's just kind of the way we've ended up doing it so we're, we're digging down about i'd say a foot nearly with this fire pit uh we're going through the soil layer it's a bit peaty but we're going through the soil layer and into the clay and there is so much clay uh, on this ground which is brilliant because we've got so many projects that we're going to do with this clay so we're going down to this clay layer about a foot deep we found the stones that you see in the video the, the footage earlier we actually found those lying around in the woodland which was awesome <laughs> we were quite surprised at that we thought we'd actually have to either go and get these stones for elsewhere from somewhere else or you know <clears throat> just yeah try and try and source them from further afield but thankfully they are yeah they're here they're in this woodland we're running out though, there's not many left. So the plan for this episode is to try and finish the fire pit. We are now four o'clock, it's winter. Uh, so we've got about 40 minutes of light left before the sun sets and then we've got a little bit of twilight till about five and then it's gonna be dark. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that answered some questions that why we didn't peel the bark off the bottom logs. I know that peeling the bark off preserves the wood for much, much longer. And if you're doing traditional cabin building or any kind of long-term structure, you should always peel the bark off but I thought I'd just explain that to you why we didn't peel the bark off. It kind of looks a bit more <clears throat> rustic, I guess, with the bark on. For the beds that we build in there, we probably will strip the bark off those uh, just so they, they do last a bit longer. Um, a few of you said about where we've put the saddle notches on the ends of the, the corners to drill a, pl a, a plug, basically, a dowel into, in, into those to, to stop those corners rocking. So we're probably going to do that at some point. We did use the rest of those sticks in the previous episode to cut down level and just secure it all a bit more. The other thing was, <laughs> which I learned in the other video, was the bit and brace I was using. I was using a flat bit. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not experts here at all by any means. We're, we're complete amateurs at what we're doing. Uh, so <clears throat> I appreciate for you serious woodworkers out there who are watching it. It must be quite painful, but I apologize for that. We are just out here having a bit of fun, trying to enjoy ourselves and we're learning along the way. But the bit and brace bit, I was using a flat bit, <clears throat> the drill bit, and it was, it was difficult. It wasn't easy. We did drill the holes with it eventually. Got a nice bruise on my chest from leaning on it. Uh, so I've got, actually got some tools that I've gone out and purchased. So I've got an auger coming in the uh, barrel eye scotch augers which is obviously going to be a lot better for drilling holes in wood we're going to make other things around the camp as well uh, what else did i get a draw knife i've got a draw knife to be able to strip some bark off things and just some other smaller tools because we've used really basic rudimentary tools it's a very basic structure 
If you guys have any uh, suggestions on other tools maybe to, to have to help build this structure, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you let us know, that'd be great. For those people who, uh, we had a few comments of people saying, it's nothing like a Viking shelter. And I, I do kind of understand what you mean because really it's not, it's not a traditional Viking shelter by any means. I, I guess early, when I speak of early Vikings, I mean the very kind of original Vikings. I think Vikings, I believe, was a bit more of a word to describe people who traveled and raided and covered ground and made buildings. It wasn't necessarily just a, a typical person. It was just what they did. It was almost a thing of what they did. But early Vikings used any resources that they can, that they found in the area, anything they would use to help build their structures. So for, for Scandinavian type areas, they used logs. They had plenty of trees over there. So they used lots of logs and they had much more log style, log cabin style in a way, uh, big structures, big long houses. Some, some of them I think were up to over 250 feet. So really long, big structures, almost like medieval halls. They were massive. But over in Iceland, they have, they didn't have all the trees like they did in the Scandinavia. So they used sod, they used turf and their houses were kind of much lower the, the pitch of the roof was much lower uh, and they just used turf they used peat blocks and sod to create their shelters so they were really resourceful and they used whatever they can so i appreciate that this isn't an official vikings shelter if anything it's got a mixture of anglo-saxon in it as well but we're just working with what we've got as the vikings once did trying to build where we can and just learning we're constantly learning so thanks to the guys who are giving feedback that's constructive we appreciate it uh, we're going to carry on with this fire pit build now, possibly eat some more food. I'm going to, we'll run through the food quickly, just what we've got. Dustin, come over here. What have we got? Well, we've got Amber with us as well. Explain what we've got here. This is amazing, this dish. What we have oh. is breadcrumbed calamari rings. Look amazing. at these. And this was so caught. So fresh. Yeah, so fresh from yesterday. Not even a day old, not even 24 hours old. And Dustin's cooked this up. And I can tell you now, guys, it's incredible. We've got sweet chili dip. It's awesome. This is my sort of food. Yeah. Mm. How have we got on this one? That tentacle. What's a tentacle? Mm. Yeah, that's good. Look at that. Yeah. So this is the, this is a Viking style long pit that we're going with. Some things in this structure are not strictly Viking related, but this definitely is. So you can see the clay here. It's, there's some really thick chunks. What we're doing is we're keeping all this clay in buckets and we're, we're carrying it just to the side of the shelter and keeping it in a pile because we're actually gonna use the clay to infill in some of these gaps and to backfill at the top of these slabs here. These are the stones that we found out in the woods. So we're gonna, yeah, use all this clay. It's all completely usable. And where we've had a bit of rain lately, it's really damp, which is making it ideal to mold and we'll just bash this all down. We're gonna clear this out a bit more. We've still got some to put here. And we're actually gonna have some stones kind of up here on the top of the pit buried down level so it's all level that way when you walk across here you'll almost be walking across some stones and things like that across here and it, it'll all be leveled off it's going to take some time we might not be able to do it all in this episode but just imagine and picture a lovely big long fire here two kind of benches this side and two raised beds this side a little bench workbench at the back where we can food prep and everything ah oh, it's going to be amazing we'll have a little opening in the top here so all the smoke can come out We've got dessert. What's this? Some melon. Mm. Watermelon. Mm. We're going to add some more cooking to the, to the episodes as well. So if you're still watching, we really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Stick around for the journey. Subscribe. Subscribe to T8 Outdoors. Subscribe to Dustin. We've got loads of cool things planned. Well, that's the basis of the fire pit so far. We've still got kind of small pieces which we need to piece in the gaps 
and then we're going to click almost chink in the gaps with clay and wedge them in somehow but that's going to be a bit longer of a process a bit slower but yeah it's just a simple case of trying to measure it up like a puzzle
Well, this is the fire pit. We've spent, it's now three o'clock, we've got about an hour of light left. We're gonna be cooking up one more bit of food before the rest of the day to, to end the day, really. This has taken all day to do this, and yesterday. So we've got, this is all clay. But the, when we dug down, if you remember yesterday, we dug right down here, we were digging up loads of clay. We stored that clay in a pile just to the side of the shelter. And now we've used that clay again to basically for pointing and to kind of cement down the outside stones here. So essentially, we're, we're not sure, we, we've not done loads of clay work before, so I know you can mix it with uh, like straw and things like that to make a kind of cob, and you can mix it with um, ash from the fire, but we haven't done that for this. We're just kind of uh, going with the flow here and trying to save a little bit of time where we can. So we're not gonna have a fire in this today because we're gonna try and let it dry naturally and then perhaps in a week's time, uh, start some small fires in here, a couple of small fires, just to let that dry out uh, over time and dry slowly. Because obviously clay does crack when it dries really fast. But essentially this is the pit. It's a pit, it's a big pit. We reckon it's about easily four foot by two feet. And then the reason we put slabs on the side here as well is that you, these will eventually be, you'll be able to walk on the side of these. And it also means if we've got hot pots and pans and things like that, we can place them on the side anywhere around the shelter, uh, around the fire pit, sorry. We're gonna, we've got one more big, huge stone to put at the back here. But yeah, other than that, it's finished. But you can see why we've left that roof open now, just because the, the, uh, the light that it allows in for the filming uh, and also it just gives us more room to maneuver and carry things without having to crouch down So hope you're enjoying it so far guys. We are. Let me show you close up. So here we go in close up You can see we've done the pointing as best we can All around there and that's all wet at the moment. So hopefully that will set over time But it's it's bang smack in the center of the shelter Near the door just so that if any cold draft comes in through the entrance this fire will keep that cold draft away the idea is to have maybe a few benches here and a bench there and then at the back across there and along here to have some raised beds let us know your thoughts on that but this is as far as we've got today we're quite impressed it's taken a long time using clay very long time but we're, it's a very rewarding job doing this the, the idea if we've got some stones here we're going to put a big old slab stone there which we found in the woods earlier and that's going to be where we can put our pots and pans and things like that this will all be, when it's dry, we'll be able to walk on all these because obviously the eaves of the shelter come right down. We are going to finish off the day with some fresh black bream, which has been caught by my dad on, over on TA Fishing. Go and subscribe to TA Fishing if you want to know how to catch this species. I'll put a few links in the description below. It's a lovely tasting fish. We are going to cook it whole. I'm not going to cook it. Dustin's going to cook it and prep it on our little fire pit out here. It's been a bit of a seafood special, hasn't it, this one? Yeah, I say, we don't only eat things that walk or <laughs> things that fly, we also eat things that swim. We do, yeah. It's all about cooking, and we'll try and add some more cooking into the episodes as well. It looks like some of the skin has stuck to the dry grill. Maybe I should have oiled the grill or oiled the fish as well, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a bit of skin. But here we are, a bit of lemon. I'm sure that's gonna add some lovely flavor to it. And there we have it. Here's our char grilled black bream. I'm sure this is going to taste absolutely fantastic. I'm just flaking up a little bit so that when I squeeze this lemon over it, oh yeah, and a bit more lemon there, and then add, let's add a little bit of salt. Salt bay. A bit of salt bay, yeah. <laughs> and then a bit of pepper. What's the verdict? Verdict is. Our survey says. Lemony. Oh. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. That is good, man. Nice bit of lemon. Keeping it simple, mm. isn't it? Just mm. keep it simple. So good. 
Oh, it's good. Char grilled, lovely. Very good. To finish off the day of our of our seafood special <laughs> with the Viking pit, which we can't wait to cook on next episode. Imagine a nice, huge, long fire in there in the winter. It'd be amazing. We are going to do the roof at some point. Don't worry. It's a huge job. It's a big. It's going to be maybe two episodes doing the roof. So that's it for episode three of the Viking House build. I hope you guys are enjoying this. We appreciate it's not, you know, specific, historically correct Viking House. It's our adaptation of it. But what we've loved doing the most, I would say, is basically doing what the Vikings did and use the resources that are around us. Absolutely. They used anything. Someone was commenting earlier, and I did a bit of research on it as well. They used things like whale bones, obviously peat, sod, turf, all that kind of things. They, they were so resourceful. And that's what we're trying to go for here. It's a very rudimentary shelter, a very rudimentary shelter, but it would still last years. It would mm. last absolutely years. Definitely. And we're, again, we're trying to use the resources around us. The stones are from the same woodland. The clay is from the pit that we dug. Yep. It's, it's so good to be able to use the resources, the cedar trees. It's all, it's all trying to keep in touch with what the Vikings did. So that's the kind of message we're trying to send here. Is not, this is not a, a series on how to build a Viking shelter. This is just a series on trying to inspire people to get out there and, you know, experience nature and use nature to your advantage, to help you. Seeing resources and using those resources yeah. and making something out of those resources. Exactly. That's what we try to get across in the videos anyway. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it's not everyone's cup of tea, but thanks so much to the people who are watching, to the people who are enjoying it. We do appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you guys in episode four, which is, we've got a lot to get. We're going to have to beat this one, which is going to be tough. But I hope you guys stick around and we'll see you there.